Alright, welcome everybody to Honoo Pro Wrestling's first ever event, the Revival Chapter of Bushido, live from Enochiasm Hall. I'm Brick 9mm, here alongside... Zimir Lobo here, and I'm prepared to commentate perhaps the best uh, that pro wrestling has to offer. Here we have Tyson Apollo, a former boxer here in the MMA ring, and he is going up against Davey English, a former wrestler who has seems to be a submission specialist. Yeah, I love his shorts there. They're just wonderful. Neon green with spots. You see, it distracts the opponent. Is that why his head's so shiny? No, because that's what they focus on. That's not good. So, you have the boxer with the natural strike hand advantage because the wrestler cannot perform strikes. But, the wrestler has the clear advantage on the mat. As we say this, um... Apollo gets a very nice headlock, or at least stiff stiffing that takedown. Yes. Boxers may not be as technically proficient as wrestlers, but they have a few tricks up their sleeve. In addition to the standard punch-punch, punch-again strategy. I mean, punching is a pretty good trick. It ends fights real fast if you're not prepared for it. And wrestlers, they aren't used to getting hit in the face. As we can see, as Davy English has been busted open mere minutes into the first round. You know, that's really not going to do good for his stamina later in this match. He's got three rounds to get through and he's already bleeding like a stuck pig. Yes, Apollo clearly has the advantage. Even if, but can English and his advantage on the mat close the gap? You see, he keeps going for this double leg takedown here, and he might need to- there he goes, he tries something else with that nice suplex there, but that double leg takedown really doesn't seem to be working for him early in this fight. Yes, the wrestlers may have- may be, have that strategy of cutting you down bit by bit, but the boxer has that ability to immediately put you down as Davy English hits a capture suplex! Followed by a dragon sleeper hold as the seconds tick down. You see, that's the kind of big move he's going to need to get back into this. Yes, if he can pull out everything in his arsenal, he might just make it as Apollo with deadly strikes one after the other. I don't know how much longer he can hold out. See, I'm really impressed with English. He hasn't been down long enough for the referee to even start counting in this match. German suplex off the mat! He's fired up! He's fired up. He's just started brutalizing Apollo here. One, two, three, four, five. Davey English is not out of the fight yet in this first Block A matchup to open up the First Honoro Pro Wrestling show in history. You see, this is all English needed to do here. All he is... needed to do to put Apollo away. Honestly, that was an impeccable round two from him. Um, getting all of that grappling in and huge slams basically from the beginning. Yes, Apollo may be a proficient striker, but English and his technical skill on the mat won him this first match of the night. As well as the first match in the Honoo GP.
Now for a special exhibition matchup as Sam Bop, the boxer, takes on fan favorite Wild Mike of Wild Mike's Frozen Pizza. You see, Wild Mike's here to prove that he does more than just make a mean pizza. He wants to prove he can throw some mean kicks and hang with the best fighters here at Ono Pro. Yeah, you see, I'm quite a big fan of Wild Mike. Nowhere else in the sport of professional wrestling is there a man as wild, as passionate as Wild Mike is. Every single kick he throws has the force. The force required to make it here in Hono Pro. The real thing Wild Mike needs to work on is not getting overexcited and making sure those huge kicks land. Yes, because he may be a great striker, but Bop is perhaps the greatest pure striker Hono has to offer. However, and Wild Mike knows that. That's why Wild Mike's taking him to the mat early and putting in these headlocks. Yes, Mike has that karate advantage. He doesn't have to rely merely on his kicks. He has some nasty mat work and holds, too. As we can see, as he demonstrates the turkey wing, the front neck lock. Yeah, that front neck lock, it's... It's not necessarily the most devastating hold in the world, but it is going to cut off airflow and it's going to daze Bop. And if you can keep Bop dazed, he can't do what he's doing right now and just uppercut you to death. Mike is still showing that spirit of his, but Bop just keeps firing away. Punch after punch, uppercut after uppercut. Speaking of uppercuts, oh. he has knocked Wild Mike out mere seconds into the first round of this special exhibition matchup. I'm honestly speechless. I. Wild Mike is normally such a strong competitor, able to fight through blows like that, but Sam Bob just leveled him. Wild Mike may have that fighting spirit, but Bop is the scariest man in Hono Pro Wrestling. He just outpaced him every step of the way with those devastating strikes and showed that he could end it at any moment. There's only so much you can do when you take 20 hits straight to the chin. One of them's eventually going to take you down. Wild Mike will be avenged. Here we have the hybrid fighter, Danny Thorpe, in the second Hono OGP match of the night, Block B, it's Thorpe versus the legendary Karateka, Zemire LeBay. You know, I wonder you where see, this I'm... I wonder where this Zemire guy got his name from. I wonder too, Brick. I wonder too. Yeah, it's like, I know a few Zemires, but none of them are as handsome as Zemire LeBay. Thank you. I needed that. 
And look at those pants of it. Those signature blue pants. And I see Danny Thorpe here. He is honestly a phenomenal hybrid fighter. He shows some of the best, some of the better striking Hano Pro has, and also impeccable mat work. But Zemire has that Karateka advantage, the ability to take punishment and come back from it. The ancient technique of Ukemi. Dorp, on the other hand, is the most dominant hybrid fighter this side of the wall. And you see, these two, these two are just feeling each other out early in the fight. Um, Zemire's throwing some kicks. And, oh, here we go. The early armbar from Danny Thorpe. Trying to pull Zemire's arm out of his socket. And another! And Thorpe's deadly shining triangle cross arm breaker. But all that means is Zemire has more pain to recover from. To come back from. To show that in his devastating mat work and those kicks he is known so well for. As Thorpe locks in yet another shining triangle cross arm breaker. You know, it really looks like Thorpe's got the advantage early in this match as he pummels Zemire repeatedly. That's how the Karatikas get you. They take all that punishment and you think they can't possibly come back. But then, when it really counts, they overcome the odds. But I don't know if Zemir can overcome the odds of getting punched in the face. And another punch right as the bell rings for round two. This round, this second round will be integral in Zemire's comeback. If he doesn't come back now, I don't think he'll be leaving this arena on his feet. You know, I don't think Thorpe's going to let him come back. He's working on these legs, he's working on that arm. I don't know if Zemir has a limb left to throw strikes with. You may be right. As Thorpe continues to pummel Zemire on the mat. Just continuing to strike. He's. This is. He's not getting I up. Think, I think if I was the referee, I would have called this match already. It doesn't even look like Zemire is trying to defend himself at this point. But here he goes, he broke out of that guillotine choke there. Next time Zemire's on the mat will be his last. And he knows it, he's fighting his heart out right now. Just continuing. Stop the Zemire. match! Zemire has the back of his head pummeled in on the Kleenex brand mat. Sponsored by Kleenex. Thorpe has won his first ever match in Honoo Pro, the second match of the Honoo GP. Block B. In two rounds, three minutes, and eleven seconds with a mount elbow. Honestly, an eight-minute deconstruction of Zemire. I am wholly impressed, and I think Danny Thorpe is going to do great things. I agree.
We're back with another Hono GP matchup as Saint Anger takes on The Wall Jr. in a Block A matchup. Now, Saint Anger is a devastating striker and maybe pound for pound the best, like, pure striker in Hono Pro, but. Can Saint Anger climb the wall? Yeah, the wall is the most fearsome hybrid fighter we have ever seen, even besting Richard Richards on some occasion. Now, Saint Anger does have the psychological advantage, however. As you can see, they have a very unorthodox appearance. It kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. You know, you take what you can get when you're in the ring with someone like this. Um, if if you throw them off simply by looking strange, you're going to lean into it. But look at them. They're wearing a skirt. That's not Bushido. No, but these thrust kicks are Bushido. And the moment the wall gets hit with one, he's going to wish that he was in a different state. Yeah, Saint Anger is a risk taker. Those thrust kicks may miss the mark as often as they hit, but when they hit, they do devastating damage. Damage that Saint Anger will need to ensure she ensure they have any chance of standing up to the wall and his fearsome array of spears and power bomb. You see, Saint Anger is honestly taking the correct approach here, getting all these quick strikes in, trying for thrust kicks, keeping distance. Because if you get if you grapple with the wall, the wall is going to do things like this. Rear naked choke, but wasn't locked in long enough to do any serious damage. You see, the wall is a former boxer. You can see this in his approach to striking. He's very slow and deliberate. He's slow, he's deliberate, and each of these jabs has a purpose. He's softening Saint Anger up and making them lower their defense. And as round one ticks away, neither of these competitors have really gotten the upper hand. No, they're still on equal footing. For now. You see, I think Saiyan Anger is telegraphing those thrust kicks too much this part, this early in the match because they're taking a lot of jabs to the face and also the wall is blocking these thrust kicks. Yes, the wall just successfully landed five combination strikes in a row. This could, this could end Saint Anger. It doesn't matter if you get in a thrust kick after all this. They've sustained too much damage. As the wall Ooh, and a reverses. Nice rolling arm lock there. A great counter. The wall has begun a one sided assault. Just huge clubbing blows there. Saint Anger desperately tries to close the gap, but I don't think the wall will let this comeback attempt come to fruition. As the wall runs well, with spear! a devastating spear shoulder tackle. Another, goes for another one, but Saint Anger is aware enough to dodge it. Swiftly dodge, but the wall! The wall! Power bomb! Saint Anger's footwork saving them from certain death, but this could be the end for them. As they get up at the six count. The end of round two.
Saint Anger has made it two rounds with the wall, but it is unlikely they can make it a third. I honestly, I think that spear at the end of round two, right before the bell, that might have been the end of the fight. It certainly would have. The second fall, round three. The wall and has that's... defeated Saint Anger. In quite a convincing fashion, Saint Anger did get some very nice striking in there, but they just didn't have the staying power to deal with the wall's crushing power moves. Yes, the Saint Anger has shown that they are a formidable competitor, competitor by merely lasting 11 minutes in the ring with the wall. It is now time for our, our second and final special exhibition matchup of the evening as Ian Cadman in the red corner takes on for fellow kickboxer, former member of the Yakuza and former member of BDW's community chest, Victor Kai. You see this might honestly be the dark horse for most exciting match of the night. Both of these competitors are amazing strikers, and they're just going to charge at each other from the word go. Yes, both men are highly efficient kickboxers. Fight. Even between two kickboxers, though, we're going to see a very distinct stylistic difference here, because Cadman focuses on wearing down the legs with big leg kicks like that and the jab low kick combo whereas Victor Kai is a much more like power based brutal striker yes Kai is a brawler through and through has a lot to do with his past on the streets of Osaka he had to fight to survive and once again he fights to survive in the Honoro ring Again, these two just trading kicks back and forth like it's nothing. Cadman leading into them with jabs. Of course, Kai favors slower Shote hooks, whereas Cadman's emphasis is completely on speed. They seem to be on equal footing so far in the first round. They're on equal footing and both of them are circling each other. Neither of them want to be caught out with a big kick like Cadman just threw out there, that fierce slow kick. Kai skillfully blocks that fierce low kick. You see, these two, they're definitely pacing each other at this moment. Neither of them wants to go full force because neither of them wants to get blocked or countered or walk into a devastating kick. Yes, they're taking their time. 
and as round one clo closes, they're going to have to put something out, and there it goes, right at the end of round one. Cadman sneaks in a devastating strike rush. Cadman now has the clear advantage, but Kai still has plenty of time. Will he catch up? All Kai needs to do is just launch a big strike of his own. Kai gets up any, a four count. Any single kick could end this fight. Yes, that's what makes kickboxing so exciting. It can end at any moment. Scissor kick! Ooh, amazing axe kick, followed by those knee drops to the face. But Cadman answers it with a spinning kick of his own. This is the second fall of the round. Kai is up, but one more knockdown and that'll be the end of the fight for him. Devastating pro. jumping are trying our best. Trying our best to prevent CTE. Yes, we have a very strict health policy. This is looking bad for Kai. It is, it's looking very bad for Kai, but he's just trying his best to hang on for these last 30 seconds of round two. And, and it looks what like an he effort might indeed. very well be able to do. One last strike rush. Bell rings before he could put that final knee on it though, but here he goes again with another big strike rush to start out round three. Kai could win this one. Both of these men seem to be on fumes at this point. This is insane. Those strike rushes. But Cadman answers with one of his own. Kai and has been knocked out. That was... He came out from dazed. He saw the kick coming and he countered immediately and beautifully. This is what makes Cadman one of the best kickboxers in the business. Victor Kai still has a long road ahead of him, improving that he can make the transition from pro wrestling to Hono o Pro. Now time for another B-Block matchup in the Hono GP, as the Karateka, Azumi Takahashi, will take on the kickboxer, Kilbo the Clown. Why did you let the clown into the company, can I ask? The shoes! You see his shoes, right? Those are definitely legal. And by those are definitely legal, I mean 
we have a special sponsorship deal with Kilbo's Clown Hut. Enter promo code HONO24 and receive a free squeaky note. Fair enough. Alright, so... The thing that Killbell does best is he will launch out with these huge strike rushes from the beginning of the match, and if he can get those in, then he will just run away with the match. Of course, Azumi, on the other hand, is one of the promotion's finest technical workers, as they focus on destroying arms and often accomplish just that with their signature hold, the Rodeo Stretch. Now early in this match, it looks like Azumi's almost trying to strike on equal footing with Kilba, which doesn't seem to be to her advantage. She looks to be six inches shorter and much lighter. She can't even take advantage of her speed, as Kilbo is also very fast. The thing Izumi's going to have to do here to make this fight fair is things like this work on the arms, um, slow down the match, and get these submission holds locked in. Yes, if she can continue to work on those arms and lock in, these devastating submission holds. She has this one. No amount of kicks can save your arm from being broken. And she tried to get the advantage there by launching into a big running attack, but it, Kilbo was at least not dazed enough to fall for that. Yeah, he was examining a shoe, wondering how they're legal. As Azumi launches another cross arm breaker. Now, back to that, seriously, about these shoes, what are those, like, three, four inches added to his reach? Well, you know, they're, they're not unfair. They're not loaded. Now, any amount of shoe is not going to stop you from getting your arm broken like this. Yeah. Kilbo's gone some quick kicks in, but Azumi, judging by her frequent arm work, her limb work, seems to be getting the advantage here. Just... Kilbo keeps sticking his arm out, going for a jab or something, and Azumi is ready to pull him into that armbar. Yes, they, bo they may be the same size, but the difference is all in the technique and the approach, and Azumi's approach seems to be winning out here in this mixed style fight. Wakigatame! Very quickly escaped though. Again, having your arm pulled like that is brutal. Every second could be lethal. Zumi knows she has the advantage here, she's just waiting this out. She's looking for a spot and pulling Kilbo into arm bars. Yes. She just keeps locking in those cross arm breakers, even if each one is only for a mere second. The damage piles up. And as round two ticks away... Rodeo oh. stretch! She is aiming to destroy Kilbo's arms and heading into the third round. She might do just that. And there we go. Kilbo doesn't even have the arm strength to hold his arms up for strikes anymore. Yes. Every single move is just focusing on an already damaged body part. This could and very well may be the end for Kilbo the Clown.
yet he's still trying to get back in the game with those kicks of his. You see, Azumi does not focus on the legs, meaning Kilbo still has a slight chance to come back from him. Kilbo has his greatest strength with these huge kicks. The real question is, can he get a kick? Yes. And he can. Yes, he can. With a brutal knee to the face right at the last moment. Kilbo and... overcomes the odds of getting his arms obliterated with a devastating knee strike to the face, knocking Azumi clean out and ensuring his first Honoo victory in this B block match in the Honoo GP. That said, Azumi showed extreme heart, able to just lock in armbar after armbar and execute her game plan to perfection. She just couldn't defend against that last knee strike. Yes, I'm sure after her performance tonight, she's made more than a few new fans. Heading back to Block A, we have the accomplished hybrid fighter, Richard Richards, taking on the Karateka, Mason Markham. This event, is, this event is sponsored by Scooby Doc 4 The Destroyer, featuring Atsushi Onida exclusively for the Panasonic 3DO. You see, alliteration aside, Richard Richards is definitely got the advantage on Mason Markham in all other ways. He's more agile, he may very well be stronger, and he's definitely got the better fighting physique. Yeah, I mean, Markham can't even fit in that gi of his. I think he's fighting so he can afford a new one. Richard Richards, on the other hand, fits very well in those fight shorts of his, and knows, is an expert in basically every area of mixed martial arts, from striking to submissions. Of course, Markham's physique adds a little bit to his durability, just a little bit that could help be the difference maker. You see, with Markham's size, he can bully his opponents, and that's... And he can get his ankle snapped right in half! Richard Richards, he... making his strong first impression as he destroys Mason Markham. You can't even... You can't bully your opponent if the first thing you do is get your leg broken at the knee. In one round... 1 minute and 35 seconds, Richard Richards has decimated Mason Marika.
is now time for our main event. The main event of the first ever Honomo Pro Wrestling Show as Mackenzie O'Rourke, the boxer, takes on Ricky Backdrop, another former professional wrestler trans transitioning into Matt Amateur Wrestling. And you see, unlike Victor Kai, who has a relatively extensive kickboxing shoot fighting background to begin with, Ricky Backdrop was trained in classical Greco-Roman wrestling when he began professional wrestling, and he takes that into Ono Pro. Whereas Mackenzie O'Rourke is an accomplished women's boxer out of Dublin, Ireland, who is known for her knockout power and her aggressive striking. Of course, Backdrop is the most efficient suplex user in Hono All Pro as he demonstrates right there with a devastating double arm suplex. He almost sends Mackenzie flying out of the ring right there. And that plays to Backdrop strengths because it's much easier to suplex and slam someone who's a hundred pounds lighter than you. Yes, as he skillfully avoids certain death. Fireman's carry. You see, Ricky Backdrop is offering those handshakes, but I wouldn't trust them for a second. It's just one of his mind games. As we see here, cross arm breaker. Backdrop's forte is all in the suplexes, but he can bust out a few holes. Mackenzie's trying her best to avoid these arm breakers now that she knows that Backdrop is not to be trusted. She's responding with some nice strikes of her own. Of course, Backdrop skillfully avoids. Mackenzie's most devastating move. Mackenzie definitely does not have the power advantage on anyone in Ono Pro, so she uses these running punches as a way to even the odds, get all of that momentum behind her strike. That said, that's not doubting her KO power, because any one of these punches from Mackenzie O'Rourke could end this fight. Of course, so can Backdrop, stomping on Mackenzie's head to close out the first round. Backdrop goes for a handshake to open round two, but I don't... I don't McKenzie trust him one, on that one Of course, Torture, Cobra Twist. Neither of these two seems to have a clear advantage at the moment. Both of them are still. Backdrop with the mind games. He lands an unlikely cross arm break. You see, what he's doing there is he's obviously not taking advantage of openings in McKenzie's defense. And if she lets her guard down for just a moment, he will snatch in, he will swoop in and get that cross arm breaker. And that cross arm breaker very well could end the match at any moment. Mackenzie is skillfully avoiding Ricky Backdrop, signature backdrop. But for how long can she hold out? Apparently that long. She's not out of the fight yet. Yeah, she's not out of the fight. She's probably dazed after that huge head drop, but she seems to be at least cognizant enough that the referee didn't count count her out. Anyone would be rocked after taking two of Ricky Backdrop's devastating backdrops. And as the re seconds of round two tick to a close... McKinsey has definitely lost the advantage in this fight. But one last 
punch to the gut as the as round two comes to a close. Could that a defiant, be the difference? A defiant punch to the gut. Mackenzie's not going to go down without every ounce of fight in her body. Ricky Backdrop has secured the victory. Three rounds, and for most of that, until Ricky Backdrop started hitting his backdrops, it seemed to be an even fight. But after getting dropped on your head from behind, there's not much you can do. Yes, Mackenzie with a heartwarming star-making performance in this fight against Ricky Backdrop to close out the first ever Honoo Pro Wrestling show, night one of the Honoo GP. What a night it was, Brick. Yes. I'm Brick 9mm. He's... Zemir LeBeau. He's Zemir LeBeau. Zemir LeBay. Thank you. And good night.